Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, things are a little bit different. You'll see a different background behind you. You might hear some noise on the background and that's because I am currently traveling. I just moved to London and things are a bit messy right now and I don't have my normal studio. And so I also wanted to take this opportunity to maybe make a, a, another different type of video today that is not gonna be one of my normal tutorials, but rather something uh, to showcase to you to show you what else uh, I do because if you watch this channel then you know that on this channel I break things down for you and I show you how to do what the top performers are doing but if you've been following me for a while you know that I also have some more in-depth knowledge products on my website howtodrumandbass.com and my latest like passion project in that is building the school of drum and bass which is essentially a membership that has an ever-growing number of videos about how to produce drum and bass and it ranges all the way from the super beginning from like how to use Ableton and how to use all these different tools that you're going to come across as a musician all the way to like more advanced sound design and arrangement techniques and just a lot of really useful stuff that the goal is to equate to a full musician's education. There are about 200 videos in that right now and it's growing every week. I'm posting at least one video every week and it, I just want to show you in this video today a video from that membership, one of the more sort of advanced sound design things so you can kind of get an idea of the kind of content that is in there uh, and this one is just really good so I really wanted to share it with you. And so this video is about a more advanced way to make a dance floor bass plucks because that's a topic that is um, not so much discussed but it's very important and that is you know there's a lot of different techniques and I try to dive really deep into sort of what those things mean and why you need certain things and I'm really excited about this video wanted to put it on here for you so the following is just an extract like just the exact video of uh, that that is in the school of drum and bass and the idea is to sort of show you like hey that's the quality of content that you can find in that membership now if you do want to check out that membership which I really hope you do because it's really awesome you can check out everything and all the details about it in the link below I'll also reference it later in the video as well so you won't forget because right now you can actually join for your first week for just one British pound that's really almost no money at all it's literally almost a risk-free education about drum and bass that is both suitable for beginners for intermediate and even for some more advanced producers so without further ado we're gonna move into the video and uh, yeah I wish you the best of luck and hopefully I'll see you back soon uh, with my whole nice studio background and everything all right enjoy the video hey what's up guys in this video, I want to touch one more time upon the bass plucks. You might notice that there's quite a bit of emphasis on bass plucks in this membership and also on my channel, and that's just because it's such a multi-purposeful tool in the drum bass genre. And the reason that I talk about it a lot is as well because I feel like people just don't talk about it enough because making a plucky sound is relatively simple. We've talked about that in quite a few videos before. You know, you take you take any saw-like waveform, you put it on a pluck envelope, you know, you, uh, you put some distortion on it, you make it a little bit wider. Uh, but the problem with a lot of those is that, well, if you watched the video about the vocoder plucks, you kind of saw the example. If you haven't watched that, by the way, I, I fully recommend that you do. But you saw that you kind of end up with a little bit of a thinner type of pluck that usually requires layering or you'll have to layer maybe a re-space under it that's like side chaining with it to sound sort of thick and not thin uh, altogether and you know to make it really fit into a song and really give it the power that you hear because most people want to put bass plucks in their song because they hear artists like Dimension do that or artists like Suffocus or you know the bigger sort of like you know dance floor energetic dance floor artist you know Muzz has a couple of those songs and they end up trying it and what they make just sounds weak and basically a little bit pathetic and so the vocoder video was a really good example of how to make a really full pluck because we use the vocoder for some spectral uh, masking uh, and by using a saw wave we just let through and, and emphasized like a, a very large frequency range and to Today I want to go through another way to kind of get the same end result but just in a different uh, in a different way that is maybe a little bit simpler because using a vocoder is definitely a little bit you know taking the long way around and even though it yields some really unique and beautiful and interesting results you might want to go for something a little bit simpler so what we're going to look at today is how to do that um, with uh, mostly just saturation that is really kind of meant for guitars because in the end what we're trying to emulate is a sort of you know distorted bass pluck like a really fat distorted bass pluck from an actual like bass guitar or maybe like an electric guitar type thing and we're going to be using uh, some specific wavetable techniques with this where we're going to grab a, uh, a really specific wavetable from Ana 2, which is a really cool synth by Sonic Academy. Uh, they, uh, yeah, it's it's basically like, uh, it's it's serum, but with a couple of things that it can do and a couple of things that it can do. Like for example, rather than having four oscillators, it has like six. I've used it quite a bit and it's uh, it's just a pretty interesting synth, but they have lots of really sick wavetables. And I, I just came across one that works particularly well for this type of technique. And what we're gonna do 
is we're also not just going to make one sound, but we're going to, uh, I'm going to lay out a technique for you to use all of the elements that, that I'm going to show you to make a lot of different variations and timbres of uh, bass plug, but that are all going to be fat and super harmonically rich so that you don't have to layer it as much as you would your like sort of, sort of normal thin unison saw plug type thing. All right, I think that's enough talking. Let's uh, actually have a look at sort of what, what, what does that sound like? So this is uh, currently what I made. You'll see that it's two layers. There's some stuff around here which you can ignore. This is actually just a project file for um, a recreation of the tune Ascend by Delta Heavy. Uh, which I'm going to be releasing on my channel later. And you'll see, yeah, it's it's two layers. One of them is a sub bass plug that sounds like this. So just very strong, very plucky, has quite a bit of attack to it. Uh, there's not so much going on. And then the second part is this one. This is sort of the one where all the juice comes from. And then together, they all sound like this. You could probably push this up a little bit more to make it more bassy. Anyway, I think that that sounds really nice and powerful. And what you have as a, a really nice, uh, you know, sort of benefit to that is if we if we do put an EQ on there, um, you'll see that this is very full in terms of harmonics. There we go. Very, very full, but not too much in that sort of like six plus K area, because um, that's exactly where we don't want it to be. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's let's start saying that we need this for sure. We really want to mix up the, um, well, we really want to split up your pluck into two different parts. One of them really just needs to be the sub bass. And mostly the reason for that is that we really want something super punchy and also something that we can determine the loudness of without having any of the other effects after it. You could also use the sub frequencies from the bass pluck that we're gonna create, but because we're gonna do so much processing to it, it's really hard to preserve a clean low end. So that's why we're gonna make a clean low end. Now this preset is actually part of the drum bass uh, preset pack as well. The How to Drum Bass Essentials preset pack, uh, which you can buy on our website. But basically, it's nothing more than a saw rounded square that's doing some plucking behavior and that's just like tube distorted, basically. Um, or actually, it, it's not even. And that'll just yield something really nice. And you just you, you have to make sure that that's really, really loud as well. Um, that's that's also why we pick that sort of squarey way for it. Yeah, that's, that, that's what we want. So you definitely want to have that. And then whatever you're going to create, you want to make sure, we'll get into what we're doing here a little bit more in a minute, but that it's, uh, it's definitely pretty aggressively uh, low passed because yeah, this is where that sub is going to live. Okay, so let's just really quickly, let's copy both of these and let's just start doing this again. Let's, um, let's just start from scratch and walk through all the steps uh, of this sort of template to create these really rich bass plugs. I'm gonna leave this one as it is. You, you see that there is a, a duck buddy which is side chaining on there, but it's it's not actually on. So let's let's just take this off, and then we have this serum pluck, and we're just gonna start out with uh, with an empty an empty serum here. So what we're gonna start out with is a very specific wavetable. Now, don't ask me too much about why this wavetable works. I have some half-ass explanation for it, but to be honest, a lot of the times with wavetables because there's so many squiggly lines kind of reason your way through it but a lot of it is done by ear and we're gonna go for this day z now if you don't have these wavetables don't worry you can either go and purchase on a two which i would recommend because it's a really six cent and it's a cool thing to learn if you don't want to spend like the 50 bucks that it costs it's really not that expensive um, you can also just download these wavetables online somewhere i'm going to include this specific wavetable uh, the day z one i'll just include it for free as a download for this membership i don't really know if that's completely legal but uh, we'll try if, if it's not please do tell me and i'll take it down uh, but we're going to use this day z but i would recommend you to actually look for the full set of wavetables because we're also going to be using uh, a couple of those as an example of what you can achieve with this technique because ana2 just actually has some really sick wavetables i'm actually going to load one up right now for later i'm going to turn it off but i'll, I'll show you uh, in these uh 3d wavetables there's just a bunch of really really cool ones like for example this um, dino roar which is a very squiggly very noisy kind of thing and as you may have really quickly seen, we're going to be using these this second wavetable um, to do some frequency modulation. For now, let's just start. Let's have a quick look at this wavetable. This particular setup of the wavetable at the wavetable position one is what I really like. There are some other 
versions here. But what I suspect is this wavetable works a lot better actually in ANA 2 because it has like something called a high definition wavetable, which I think it means that it has more than 256 frames. I think in this case, it kind of, you know, it kind of just imported uh, as many frames as it could. See, there's a couple of cool ones here, but you have to find which which works. So we also don't really want this wavetable position to move. Usually you would kind of put an LFO on here, uh, but we don't want to do that. We're going to keep it at one. And it's important that we use this particular wavetable because it just works really well for this particular technique. So first things first, we're going to go and uh, put a uh, LFO on the level. And we're going to put it all the way down here. We might not want to keep it there all the time. We'll talk about that later. But for now, we're going to put it all the way there. We're going to put it at 1 8 because usually uh, the uh, bass plucks, they, they appear at an eighth note. And let me also just make sure that, um, yeah, I just want to have these notes here. I don't really need the rest of this, but I just want to have these, these notes. And let's also quickly group this so that we can kind of control that by themselves. Just put this on solo real quick, right? Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to put an EQ on here real quickly already so that I can, uh, I can measure it out with my uh, existing like nice little thick bass plug. So let's just do this for a second. And that means we can also activate the bass plug. Okay, cool. We can definitely hear that, you know, the, the part on top of that is not really loud enough yet, but, but we're gonna work on that. Right now, actually, let's just solo this for now. We can hear that that is, um, that's that's quite a nice and crunchy little thing that's going on over there. Let's turn that down one. Now we got something pretty grungy and that's nice. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a shape here that has a little in between. This is something that usually happens with plucks because you kinda want it to go down pretty quickly to really get that plucky uh, flavor in there. But then the tail, you kinda wanna control to as to how, sort of, how much body it has. I think something like this probably works for now. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some minor effects here to make it wider. This is also one of the reasons that we split the sub bass and the uh, the pluck, you know, the upper pluck itself because we want this actually to have some stereo width, um, you know, to really make it, uh, give it some body, but we don't really, you know, want any of that low end to have any stereo width at all. And this is gonna separate it really nicely. So we're gonna add some hyper, a tiny bit of dimension. So the reason we add dimension is dimension is almost like a, a little bit of a slapback delay. Um, which works really well because you have the uh, body of the guitar sometimes that uh, actually gives some reverberation to it. And we're, yeah, we're just going to turn the mix of this hyper down, just add some voices, make it a little bit more stereo. And in a similar effort, we're going to add some chorus, but we're going to sort of turn the mix down. So this is just adding small layers of stereo width um, that'll just contribute to the sound being a bit wider. You could actually add these later in the chain, but you know, we're in serum now, so why not just do it? Okay, cool. So before we start working on this um, this frequency modulation here, let's just already get it ready here and uh, and activate this uh, oscillator. But we'll keep it at zero for now because we want to add some things first. So the first thing that I really like to add is True Iron. Now this is a paid plugin. I don't really like, like using paid plugins in this membership because I really want to teach you stuff that um you know that you can do for free. But this is one that's definitely worth buying. So if you don't know what True Iron does, we talk about it in some of my videos uh, because I'm a very big fan. It emulates your uh, your sound going through actual hardware. So really quickly, if you don't know, when you use hardware, the uh, the sound is not just completely digital. It actually flows through um, you know actual iron and actual metals uh, through electricity, and that gives it some interference. And that's also why people you know shout off the top of the roof that their analog gear gives so much warmth and all that crap. Well, it turns out we can just emulate that with software as well, and that's what Kazrock does. I think it's like 40 bucks, totally worth your money. It's subtle, and if you're a total beginner, you don't really need this, but it definitely adds just a nice subtle little layer of. Um, yeah, of extra character to stuff that is hard to discern on the individual level, but if you put this on your a uh, couple of your tracks and on the master track and stuff like that, there's a lot of presets for this. Uh, it really adds up and makes your track come more alive, especially when you play your track on like the bigger speakers. And it so turns out that True Iron has something for thick guitars. Um, that's exactly what we want right now. You can see here Devin Powers Rock Guitar Thick. And that's just gonna actually make it as if we had this guitar. What it's gonna do is it's gonna run whatever's coming out of Serum here through this, um, yeah, this emulation of hardware. So it's actually as if we have a guitar plug, or at least an instrument plugged in to hardware that's going into a speaker through actual voltage and cables and stuff like that. So that's really cool. 
The next thing is we, we want to continue on our idea to emulate a proper live guitar setup by using an amp. And something that really works very well for these bass plucky things is uh, the clean amp. So we're going to turn back the dry wet a little bit and just increase all these dials to like six ish, all of them. Uh, just make it pretty intense. Let's maybe put these at like seven ish. Um, and then we're also going to put this on dual. That means that the amp will deliver a stereo result rather than a mono result, which is kind of what we're looking for. So you can see here that it starts to really come alive. As a matter of fact, it almost sounds kind of jump uppy crickety. Now, here we're going to do a little trick because this might not sound uh, completely appropriate because there's, uh, in my opinion, for a so something that's supposed to be a powerful bass element, this has too much uh, high end. But we can sort of apply now, in combination with this low cut here, we can apply a high cut and sort of make this like a band pass that is just a little bit more accentuating the harmonically rich stuff that we got going on over here. So we, we took out those higher frequencies a little bit that are associated with this amp. Let's actually maybe even pull this back to 1K. Okay, cool. And then what we want to do is we want to actually go and saturate this now. Yes, uh, so it will add higher frequencies back as well because saturation adds everything uh, on the whole frequency spectrum. This is very true. That's also why we're going to have to actually... Um, low pass this again probably later but we'll we'll have a look at that and uh, you can sort of choose what you want to do here in terms of saturation so one thing that i like doing but there's many different ways to 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 kind of do this is i like to add um, some uh, freeform phase and we're just going to draw a line kind of like this we're going to put it on high This is very subtle, but actually it's uh, it's gonna make, it's almost gonna work like disperser, I feel. Uh, just gonna give it a little bit extra pinch. And that's gonna be accentuated when we add a saturator on top of this. By the way, M34 phase is just a, a free plugin. Uh, let's add a saturator also to just make this a little bit louder now. Let's add about eight uh, decibels. And you can kind of hear here that this is just giving it a little bit more realism. That's that's kind of how I feel. And we can actually probably put this on a sharper curve as well. And now we're really starting to get that sort of gnarly, deep, growly type uh, guitar that we are in fact looking for. All right, let's add another EQ because I want to do uh, a, a couple of things now. So what I want to do mostly is I want to just place another low cut here uh, because we um, yeah we added some saturation back on top of here and we, we just want to get rid of that um, in the low end just to make room for our sub bass plug, right? The second thing I want to do is I want to make a dip here, sort of somewhere between like 200 and 300 hertz. And let me just up the Q factor of this one here so that it actually will remain on zero here so that I can actually cause this little dip here. Um, just kind of needs to counteract each other. And the reason that I'm doing this is because this is sort of where muddiness starts to occur in uh, in some um, areas, especially because likely you'll have some other low end elements. And this is just gonna it's just gonna make it sound a little bit cleaner. And then I also want to accentuate that um, that high end because if I don't, you see that it's sloping off a little bit here, right? So let's actually make sure that we get a little bit more of an even frequency distribution by just upping that volume. Something like that will probably do. Maybe a bit back even. I think something like that is, uh, is about fair. And then last but not least, let's take everything we have now and add an OTT on top of that. So I like to put this time on a thousand. And then obviously we need to increase the output as well. So I'm actually gonna go pretty drastic with 18 decibels here. And as you can hear now, we actually already have like a really nice gnarly bass pluck. And so now you see that we've added a number of distortion techniques. That's really good. And I would sort of advise you that this is also where you can be uh, creative in terms of what you wanna add, but you don't necessarily have to make this too difficult because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into Serum and now we're going to apply distortion on the wavetable level by using some pretty crazy wavetables here to modulate this uh, DayZ 
wavetable. And this is going to yield some pretty cool results. So uh, this is not scripted. I'm just going to go through a couple of those and, uh, and sort of show you what the possibilities are here. But basically, we're going to be moving up this FM button a little bit to get some different results. And we'll move this wavetable position as, as well. And this is where you, you know, can get sort of infinite variations of this with the whole setup that we have right now, really making sure that the entire frequency spectrum is super full. We can now go and uh, sort of, without worrying about that, uh, choose how much we want this initial wavetable to be distorted. So let's go. Uh, I think this one, per, uh, this this exact one is probably gonna yield in something a little bit too, uh, too tinny, but uh, yeah, let's just scroll through a couple and let's see how it goes. So yeah, because this is a very squiggly wavetable, you can uh, you can kind of notice that it gets pretty intense uh, pretty soon. But we can actually sort of you know use that as well, um, sort of almost bandpass it again by uh, by just making this uh, this low cut. Because in the end, in the chain here, we already have this uh, this low cut, right? So if we sorry, if we have this high cut here, we're kind of bandpassing it again. So that already yields some pretty cool results, but we can go through some other super interesting ones. You know, find some interesting like wave shapes to uh, to do this FMing with. We can also choose to actually put this down an octave. Hey, what's up guys? Just want to take one minute of your time to ask you if you are looking to start learning about drum bass production, or maybe you've already started and you just feel like you need a lot more of the fundamentals and you want to understand it really much more thoroughly and start to finish. We have just done a soft launch for our newest product. It's a membership called the School of Drum and Bass, and it has more than 200 videos that go from all the way in the beginning on how to produce music and how to use Ableton and all those kinds of things, all the way to producing a professional drum and bass track, mixing, and pretty much everything that needs to be covered for a beginner and an intermediate producer. If you feel like that might be interesting for you, there's a super special offer right now. You can get your first week for just one British pound. That is like $1.50 if you live in the US or like one euro 15. So if you're ready to level up your drum bass production, go check it out in the link below. All right, let's move on with the video. Let's pick something else interesting. So listen how, how much character this actually adds to it by getting some crazy wavetable like this. And so you can basically make endless possibilities here. And the reason that I uh, that I did say like go and use these Anna two wavetables is because in here there's just a couple of really super interesting ones that have these uh, really nice squiggly lines, but that don't go up too much into the uh, far extremes because that's what kind of makes it a little bit too um, too machiney and too sort of electric, uh, which which is not really good. We want to keep that sort of darker timbre. <laughs> But like that, for example, is super rich and super nice. And we can just keep doing this, right? Yeah, listen to that. And yeah, you can basically keep tweaking settings. You can take the filter on or off. You can add stuff later. But because we now have these this unlimited way of affecting the first wavetable, we can keep continuing to get cooler and cooler timbres. Here's another one that just sounds super gnarly, super cool, super rich. And 
Anyway, I think you see what the point is. You can basically keep going and going and going. And what you got to do is you got to keep going until you find a couple of nuggets. You got to save them and then they're in there. In the How to Drum Base Essentials preset pack, I've also included a whole bunch of bass plugs that are variations of uh, these kinds of experiments that all sound super fat, super wide, super gnarly. Um, so I definitely recommend you to go and check those out. All right. So yeah, that is the template here. Some emulation of hardware, some uh, creative distortion, and uh, some filtering here to, uh, to kind of accentuate the kind of stuff that we want. And then basically just going back into Serum and, uh, and changing what you want. And mind you, you can also use a different wavetable. Um, I would advise you to find something that looks uh, like this, you know, where it doesn't, again, doesn't go up into these higher regions. You'll see that those, those work the best. And yeah, so the end result together with a bass block kind of sounds like this. Nice. All right, happy producing, guys.